My husband was diagnosed with depression. He needs to rest. I need you to rent me your house. Why would I do that? My husband and I refused. My sister-in-law and her husband took us by surprise. But it seems like their plan backfired. Linda, you got what you deserve. Please, make sure they pay for their crimes. My name is Michaela. I'm a 32-year-old office worker. My husband Aaron and I have been married for six years. We have been together since high school and started dating when we were 18 years old, so we've been together for 14 years now. Even after all those years, we're still in love just like we always have been and we feel very happy every day. After graduating from high school, my husband and I went to the same university. There, he studied business administration and I studied English literature to improve my English skills. We both did well in our studies in university and got good grades, which we used as an advantage to get jobs. After that, I got a job at a small company and started to work very hard and became a certified interpreter while I was working. My husband got a job at a large company and is working very hard. We both worked hard at our jobs and made time for each other. We continued our relationship and got married when I was 26. We actually didn't have a wedding, that's because we were trying to save money. My husband and I have been saving money since before we got married. It was for one goal only. We both dreamed of building our own home. So even after we started working, we lived at each other's parents' houses and saved money until we got married. We got married when we both started advancing in our careers. My husband got a promotion and I got my certification and started working. And even though we started to have more money, we tried to rent cheap apartments as much as possible. We didn't go out to eat except on anniversaries and we cooked our own meals. We felt that we were making a good living and more than anything, we were happy knowing that we were saving more and more money. We could see that we were doing the right thing, and we were very happy to visualize that we were moving towards our dream of owning a home. Once we had saved up a certain amount of money, my husband and I started going to real estate agencies and began thinking about getting our own house. I was so happy and content during that time that I felt my dream of owning my own house was becoming more and more realistic. When my husband and I had meals together, we would often talk about the house and We would naturally come up with ideas like, I want this one. Now, 10 years after we both started working, my husband and I have finally decided to build our own home. I couldn't have been happier. It had always been a dream of mine to build my own home since I was in high school, and I told my husband about that when we were just dating. And now, it was finally time for our dream home to come true. I have been excited every day since we started construction for the house. Michaela, you seem to be in a good mood. Really? To tell you the truth, the construction for my house just began. Oh, I see. It's always been your dream, right? Yes, since high school. That's a very long time. No wonder you're so excited. Once the house is complete, please come over. Really? I'd love to. Sarah is my senior, and she is an interpreter and a pretty good one at that. When I was just starting out as an interpreter, she supported me a lot. She's three years older than me, but she is so cool in her fashion, her mood, her way of speaking, and her little gestures, and I admire her. She has an aura about her that makes you think you are in a fashionable European town just walking around with her. And when I talk to her in person, I can see she's not trying to pretend to be something she's not, but just living her life as it is. I hope to be a cool woman like Sarah someday. When my dream of owning a home comes true, I'm going to work hard on improving myself. As I was spending my days thinking about these things, my home was finally complete. Wow, it's amazing. The house is just as I wanted it to be. When we arrived at the completed house, we were impressed just by looking at the exterior. And once we got inside, it was amazing. It was exactly what my husband and I had asked for after consulting with the realtor. This is going to be our future home. I'm getting really emotional, you know. We're going to live here together every day and make a lot of memories. I'm excited just thinking about it. We'll probably have a baby and we can play together in the yard. 
A boy or a girl? I'd like a boy. I want to play catch with him. I want a girl. I want to go shopping and go to cafes with her. My husband and I were thrilled and excited the whole time. And we had a lot of fun talking about the future. After that, we started living in our own house. Every morning when I wake up, I'm so happy knowing that I get to live in my own home. The kitchen is very easy to use. I enjoy cooking every day. I naturally wanted to try out different recipes, and my cooking skills improved as I went along. We also invited our respective families to the house. When my parents arrived, they were both moved into tears. I'm so happy for you both. I'm glad you were finally able to fulfill your dream. Mom, Dad, don't cry. There is no way a proud parent would not cry during this moment. I was happy that my parents were happy to see that I was so excited. And when my in-laws come over, they were all so touched. It was really nice. You can tell they talked it over and made the house exactly the way you wanted it. That's what my in-laws were saying. Oh, look at the kitchen! I wish I could use it. That's what my sister-in-law exclaims. She's two years older than my husband and I, but she is a bit mentally young and childish. And she was more excited than others. It's amazing, amazing, amazing! You and your family are going to live in a house like this? I mean, we already live in it. We built this house, my husband told her. But my sister-in-law was excited as ever, looking around saying, Oh, I'm so jealous. And there was one more person who was excited. That person was my sister-in-law's husband, Tyler. Hey, there's quite a few rooms. The big yard would be perfect for barbecues. It makes me want to live here. That's for sure. My sister-in-law and her husband were joking, of course, but my husband and I were a little taken back by that comment. We didn't want them to say that they wanted to live in our house that we had worked so hard to build. Well, after that, we were all too busy eating and drinking together, so my husband and I decided not to mention it. But then, about a month later, I got a call from my sister-in-law out of the blue. Hey, L Linda, what's wrong? I rarely receive phone calls from my sister-in-law. What on earth did she want? The house of yours is wonderful. Will you let me live there for a while? I was surprised when my sister-in-law called me and suddenly said something like that. Um, what do you mean by that? First of all, I didn't understand what she meant. Is she asking to move in with us? My husband has depression. Oh, really? I, I'm so sorry to hear that. It's been hard, very hard. He can't go to work anymore. He's been resting in the room right now. But he, he seems to be in a lot of pain. I see. So please, he needs some rest, so let me rent this house. Why would I do that? I, I'm sorry that Tyler's depressed, but I can't just rent you our house. Wow, you're terrible. You're supposed to be nice to sick people, aren't you? I mean, even so, put Aaron on the phone. He's not back from work yet, but I think he feels the same way. We won't let you rent our house. That's your opinion, right? Aaron cares about his big sister, so he'll definitely rent it out to me. Where on earth does my sister-in-law's absolute confidence come from? I ended the call by saying I'll talk to my husband because I was afraid she would pester me endlessly with requests. I told this to my husband when he came home from work and he was stunned. Of course, I won't allow that. What is Linda thinking? My husband said that and called Linda himself, but she still wouldn't back down. Do you not have a shred of kindness in your heart? Tyler is in so much pain. You're a heartless person. Even I could hear my sister-in-law screams through the phone. My husband, not wanting to beck and call, coldly dismissed her, saying, it doesn't matter what you say to me. But my sister-in-law hung up the phone, saying she'd go talk to him in person next time. I was on speaker, so I heard what my sister-in-law said, too. I feel really dumbfounded. What in the world is she going to do when she comes over here? And a few days later, my sister-in-law and her husband really came to our house. Please, please, please just give us the house! Tyler is in a lot of pain. 
Tyler looked pale, much different from the last time he came to visit us. I still can't rent you the house, but what the hell happened? My husband asked, looking tired. He's actually harassed by his boss. It's driving him crazy. I'm sorry to hear that. Right, so please. No, that's crazy, right? What? Why do you need to rent our house? Because like I said, Tyler needs to rest. It's going to feel more like a vacation home in this new house. In this house that you've been living in, right? It'll lift up his spirits and help with the depression. Huh? My husband sounded annoyed. My husband and I feel the same way. My sister-in-law's logic is far-fetched and ludicrous. She's probably trying to make it look like they wanted to live when they first came here. But neither my husband nor I deceived such an easy-to-see lie. I wouldn't rent the house no matter what you say. You say he has depression, but you have a medical certificate or something. Has he reported this to the company? There are procedures to get medical benefits and all that. Did you report to the company that he was being harassed by his boss in the first place? What's the company doing about this? I don't trust someone who says they're suffering from depression when they don't even explain those details at all. My sister-in-law and her husband seemed to panic when my husband spoke up. Hey, don't say those things all at once. Tyler and I have never been in a situation like this before. Anyway, it's true, he's depressed. Just let us rent the house. No means no, just give up. When my sister-in-law tried to force us to rent the house to them, my husband stubbornly refused. When we wouldn't budge even after she raised her voice in anger, my sister-in-law finally cursed at us for being bastards and took her husband home. We were so tired. I doubt he's depressed if they're acting this way. I'm really sorry for the trouble she put you through. I'm so glad you said no. This is our home and we won't let anyone take it away. My sister-in-law and her husband were a pain in the ass, but it was still nice to know that my husband and I had a strong bond. But then something unexpected happened. When my husband and I refused, my sister-in-law and her husband took a surprising step. What? You gave Michaela and Tyler money? When my husband received a phone call from my parents-in-law, we learned a shocking truth. It seems that my sister-in-law and her husband told my parents-in-law that Tyler was suffering from depression, and my parents-in-law gave them money. Why did you do that? Because I feel sorry for them. In times like this, we should support each other as a family. My parents-in-law seemed to completely believe my sister-in-law and her husband's story, and no matter what my husband said, it was all they did for them. My parents-in-law has been giving them money to my sister-in-law and her husband frequently since then. I can't believe they're taking advantage of my in-laws like this. What they're gonna do is nothing but fraud. My husband and I couldn't be more disgusted with my sister-in-law and her husband, but we have no proof that Tyler is not depressed, so we wonder what to do. Then one day something unexpected happened. Sarah, you don't look so well. Yeah, I had a little too much to drink last night. I had a drinking party with some of my classmates from college. I see. Your classmates must be a lot of cool and fashionable people. No, they're, they're not. They're all old men and women. Well, I can't tell that them, though. <laughs> Laughing, Sarah showed me a photo that she took at that party yesterday. Huh? When I was shocked when I saw the photo, but... Could that man in the suit be... Oh, Tyler, do you know him? Um, well, yeah. I see, I see. Um, did Tyler seem to be doing well to you? Huh? Yeah, he was very energetic. He's been wearing expensive watches and recently bought a car. A watch and a car? I felt anger welling up inside of me. Michaela? The anger must have been showing on my face and Sarah looked at me with concern. I I'm sorry. What happened? D does it have to do with Tyler? To tell you the truth, I told Sarah everything. There's no way he has depression. He said yesterday he was covering for his subordinate at work when he made a mistake. He's working like a normal person. So he was lying after all. That's disgusting. He was using the money he got from his wife's parents to live lavishly, right? 
When Sarah found out the truth, she got very angry with him. She promised to explain to my in-laws with me and my husband. Is that true? I was drinking with Tyler and I heard him correctly. So I don't think he's sick. I, he's going to work as usual and with the money you guys gave him, he and his wife are spending it on luxuries. I told you, my sister has been lying to you guys. My in-laws were shocked to learn the truth. I'm going to call Linda and her husband right now. My father-in-law said that and called my sister-in-law. And an hour later, my sister-in-law and her husband arrived. Dad, why'd you call me here all of a sudden? My sister-in-law was instantly disgusted when she noticed me and my husband. Why are you here, Aaron? I'm here because it's important for the family. Huh, what are you talking about? At that moment, Tyler came up behind my sister-in-law and pretended to be weak. But the moment he saw Sarah's face, Tyler froze in place. Hello, Tyler. Why are you here? I explained to Tyler, who was turning pale. She's my senior at work. I had no idea that you and Sarah went to college together. She told me that you guys saw each other at a party the other night, and she told me all about it. Tyler's face is getting paler and paler. Linda, you lied to us about Tyler being depressed. What are you talking about, Dad? Tyler is really depressed and he can't go to work right now. Lying to all of us like that won't help you now. We know that Tyler was covering for his co-workers' mistakes and that he's been taken about by his most recent work accomplishments. My sister-in-law finally understood what was going on. Mom, Dad, this isn't what it looks like. Then what is it? You deceived us. No, um, what do you mean depression? What do you mean unable to work? Have you ever given the slightest thought to those who are truly suffering from the disease? It's the end of you as a human being to tell such a lousy lie for the sake of your own luxury. My sister-in-law and husband were completely freaked out when my father-in-law yelled at them so angrily. I'm going to ask you to return the money I've given you. What? That's impossible. I already spent it. And you'll have to work or sell whatever you bought to pay us. If you don't pay us, we'll report it to the police. The police? Oh, no! The couple slumped down on the floor, looking pale in relation to the situation. Afterwards, Linda and Tyler ended up selling their car, watch, and other things to pay back my parents-in-law. However, they still didn't have enough money, so Linda, who used to be a housewife, is now working part-time to pay back the money. Sarah told the other university classmates about the incident, and even people at Tyler's workplace found out, so it began to embarrass him. The manager and the head of the department sarcastically said to him, You seem to think that everything is power harassment. My sister-in-law and her husband tried to deceive us, and my parents-in-law with terrible lies, but... As a result, they had to pay the price. Please, my life is so hard, I can't stand it. Can you believe me just this one time? One day, Linda and Tyler came to our house and got down on their knees and asked us to help them, but there's no way we were going to help them. Linda, you got what you deserve. Please, make sure they pay for their crimes. Don't ever get involved with us again. If you ever come back here, we'll call the police. After we said that... My sister-in-law and her husband ran away from our home quickly. I don't know how they've been doing since then, but I guess we can rest easy and know that they stopped coming. They caused us a lot of trouble, but I'm glad it's settled for now. My husband and I were relieved to be back in our own home and enjoying our life again. Sarah, thank you so much for everything. It's fine. I'm rather sorry I didn't realize that my lovely junior was in trouble. As an apology for the trouble my classmate has caused you, let's go out for a drink together today. I'll pay. All right, th thank you. I'll, I'll follow you for the rest of my life. I can't thank Sarah enough for giving me the opportunity to expose my sister-in-law and her husband's wickedness. I'd like to buy her a drink, but I'm going to treat her to a delicious home-cooked meal the next time I invite her over. Please, tell me another interesting overseas story today. Sure. Today, I'm going to tell everyone something that happened in Brazil with a young man who worked in an ice cream shop. 
I can't believe that Linda lied about her husband's illness and stole money from her parents. What a scammer. And I can't believe she thought Michaela and Aaron would allow them to live at their home. I'm glad Michaela and her family were able to protect their house from Linda. 